Good morning, brethren, sisters, and Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God. Hello. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it has been quite a while since uh, I had uploaded a video. Uh, lots of stuff to do. However, um, recently, recently, your servant encountered sickness. Last Thursday, um, went out, uh, went out to the store, got some garlic and whatnot. But uh, my wife made us some dinner and whatnot. It was fine and all. But Thursday night, I got sick all of a sudden. Um, uh, in a way that doesn't happen. Now we all get sick every once in a while, right? I mean, we've all had flu, we've all had a cold, we've all felt like death warmed over. You know, we've all had these things before. Some people more so than others. <clears throat> With myself, it's, uh, it's rare. It's really rare when I personally get sick. It's, it's extremely rare. It just doesn't happen. But what happened with this was it, it hit me Thursday. And I just started burning like crazy. Um, like a fever. You could probably, you could have probably fried an egg on my head. And um, I was after that. On Friday, I spent the whole day in bed, just aching, um, and it felt like railroad spikes were going through my temples. Just an incredible headache. I mean, it wasn't even a headache. It was, um, it was far beyond a headache, and plus the burning, you know, in the eyes and whatnot. And I spent uh, Friday literally all day in bed and um and then on saturday as well i was bedridden as well with um aches pain lost my appetite i can still taste <coughs> i can still taste but um yeah it's and i'm still not 100 percent at all I still got like a burning in my stomach and stuff like that. It's, this, is, this has been unusual. This doesn't happen. And so quickly, so rapidly like that. Um, and like I said, this happened, it happened on Thursday. And then Friday, I was in bed all day. Saturday, I was in bed all day. Yesterday, which was Sunday, starting to get a little better slowly but surely, but also ended up staying most of the day in bed as well. Just totally debilitating. And any of you who have had like the flu or the cold, it, it can put you down, but it's like you could still do stuff in, in a, to an extent. You know, um, this, this was different. This was different. Makes me wonder, did I encounter the biological weapon known, and I, and I got to use this kind of language because this is the sacred calf to the censorship board here on YouTube. Uh, did I come in contact with the biological weapon known as the poison crown? You look up those words in Latin, you know what I'm talking about. I think so. <laughs> I really think so. I think I did. Um, how? And the interesting thing about it was I, I traced my steps. And uh, my brother, our brother, Alexander Hartley, asked <clears throat> the question, were you poisoned? It's like, well... Retracing my steps of what I eat, what I had eaten that day. Um, there are possibilities, but I, I don't know. 
I don't know, but like I said, the the how speedily how speedily this came on, how um, how rapid it was, and how how debilitating. It was not normal. It was not, it was, this isn't a normal sickness. I truly believe this is the product. I'm suffering the product of something man-made. I really do. I really do. My wife, a couple years ago, uh, literally a couple years ago, um, also encountered the biological weapon like this, which uh, knocked her down for a couple days as well. So, uh, but anyway, that is what has happened to me personally. Um, I'm still not 100%, no way. Uh, I, I've, I've, I've gotten so much sleep in the past couple of days, it's disgusting. But when I'm weak, and also too, it affected my reading of scripture. Now, there ain't nothing going to stop me from reading scripture. That ain't going to happen. But reading scripture for myself is a joy and a privilege. And when I personally read scripture, it's not just a couple of chapters here and there. It's uh, get deep into it. But what had happened was it affected the way I, my focus I couldn't focus on the words, and the more I did, the more it hurt. Uh, like on um, on Friday, all I could do was read the proverb, the Ecclesiastes, and the um, and the Song of Solomon. That's all I could do, <laughs> you know, because I couldn't focus. It was it was debilitating. I, I was you know the lightheadedness and whatnot. Um, it, it, it was horrible. It was horrible. And I'm still, like I said, I'm still not out of the woods yet. But um, it, it, was, it was bad. It was bad. This is not, I don't believe this is the product of natural means. I think there is something biologically engineered here because this is just... This is just way, way too intense. But um, that brought me to the, to the thought of what we're going to talk about. Please get your authorized version of Scripture. Please read along with me. Uh, we're not going to have a long video today. I'm not up to it. <laughs> One second. Oh, all right. It brings us to the question of healing. Now the charismatics are the ones, the charismatic Pentecostals, they are the ones usually that promote, you know, healing, get your healing from the Lord and go pay a hundred dollars uh, to some faith healer. And yeah, I, I know that uh, Todd Bentley guy in the Florida revival, uh, Benny Hinn, <laughs> Uh, Andrew Womack, those idiots. Uh, these are guys who promote this um, um, healing, healing. Now, let's let's establish one thing. Can the Lord miraculously heal someone today? Absolutely, he can. Absolutely, he can. The Lord can, if he wanted to heal anyone of any affliction that they have. Yes, he can. But what these guys do is they're taking something specific and trying to make it still applicable when it already reached its apex long ago. What am I talking about? Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verses 23 on to verse 30. Forgive me if I'm if I seem off. Okay, like I said, I'm I'm really not up to it. But and being let go, 
They went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain, imagine vain things? Quoting Psalm 2. <coughs> the kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. Christ means anointed one, dear brother. Okay? Christ means anointed one. What you seem to be conveniently sidestepping is that there are many false Christs today, okay? You are sidestepping that, brother, okay? You are my brother. I think you are my brother. You, okay, I love you. We aren't going to get along. That's fine. But you're, you're sidestepping that. Yes, to be a Christian is to be a follower of Christ. You're uh, avoiding the witch Christ. You're avoiding that. Okay? But anyway. The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. Christ means anointed one. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus... Whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. Pay attention. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And, of course, we go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, gotta, gotta mention this, because this is what the charismatics do 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 22 for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom miraculous healing as in the book of Acts okay was a sign gift unto the Jews to show them that they have that right there was the kingdom of God, the spiritual aspect. They foregone the kingdom of heaven with the stoning of Stephen. And after the stoning of Stephen, when Jewry in itself, in, in, in its entirety, not individually, but Jewry rejected the Lord, rejected Jesus, the sign gifts were already um, starting to diminish, okay? They were sign gifts onto the Jewish people. And the healing, you look it up yourself, the healings that are talked about in the New Testament are always with Jews present. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, not 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 on to verse 11. Now, you have to remember about the church in Corinth. Okay? Corinth was like a melting pot. Many Jews were there. Okay? The apostles were still there. And the sign gifts died with the apostles chosen of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The sign gifts died out completely with the apostles. Okay? All right? So you got to remember that. 
Don't let these charismatics fool you, okay? Um, praying on you because you're weak and you're looking for a miracle, okay? God can provide a miracle, but not, not through. And plus, too, you got to remember, the charismatics don't rightly divide the word of truth, okay? Warning number one. Very similar to the sleazy believists, okay, who say it's by grace through faith from the beginning to the end. It's, it's nonsense, okay? But 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 unto verse 11. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same capital less spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the same gifts of he, uh, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, and tongues is languages, okay? But all these worketh that one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Now, the, like I said, the thing you got to remember is that in Corinth, there were many Jews there. The apostles were still alive. The sign gifts, while in decline, were still active. Okay, they were still active. As long as the apostles were alive, the sign gifts were there. Okay, that's how that works. Because after the apostles, there are no more signs, sign gifts, okay? They, they reached their apex with the death of the apostles, okay? All right? So, you have to remember that when Paul mentions about the gifts of healings, okay, the apostles were still alive, all right? Many Jews were in Corinth. So, of course, with him being there in Corinth, okay? All right. And also, skip down to verses 27 on to verse 31. Now, ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church. First apostles, secondarily prophets, Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? <clears throat> but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet shew I unto you a more excellent way. Now, some of these atheists might say, Ah, Brad, you said that God abhorreth the covetous. Uh, I didn't say that. The scriptures say that. God abhorreth the covetous. But Paul is talking to us, he said, to covet the best gifts. Yeah. Why, though? Ephesians chapter 4. Here's another thing that the uh, charismatics like to sidestep. See, they, cover, they preach about coveting the best gifts so that you may be glorified. Uh, how many of you, beg your pardon, how many of you have encountered some of these charismatic twits? <laughs> beg your pardon who have said stuff like, you know, well, I don't speak in tongues. And, and they say to you, well, it's not a gift for everyone. Only special people have the 
gift of tongues. Pride. Like these uh, twits who think that they seen God. I've seen it. You've seen the devil, if anything. Okay? See, they, they categorize the gifts as a means to exalt themselves. But Paul does say to covet the best gifts. But for what purpose? See, God abhorreth the covetous because covetousness is always usually about glorification of self. But see, the gifts of God, spiritual gifts and whatnot, have a specific purpose. Ephesians 4, 7 on to verse 16. But unto every one of us is grace is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers, for... The perfecting of the saints. Don't look at me. Look at the scripture. <coughs> for, <coughs> for the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. See, we are to covet earnestly the best gifts. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. For the edifying of the body of Christ. The gifts that we get are given us so we can give unto others, not exalt ourselves. But see, the charismatics flip that and they use it to glorify themselves instead of edifying the body of Christ. And plus, they're not saved anyway. Okay? Watch out for these charismatics. So we all come in the unity of the faith <coughs> and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness where, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Ah, carried about with every doctrine. Kind of like what the charismatics do. They, they get carried away with some of the craziest nonsense. Okay? Yes, so that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning, craft, cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh it, in, maketh, it, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Whew. So see, spiritual gifts, and there are spiritual gifts today, yes. Prophesy, to prophesy. Not like an Old Testament prophet. Okay, you got to watch out for that thing. Okay, Old Testament prophets were prophesying revelation as it was given. We today prophesy scripture. Okay, that's what we do today. That's how we prophesy today. The Lord that dwells within me speaks the word to you, and the Spirit identifies. That's prophesying today, not as the Old Testament prophets. 
because the charismatics believe that the Holy Ghost can come and go, come and go, come and go, because they don't believe in eternal security, they don't rightly divide the word of truth. They're whacked, okay? They're whacked. They're, they're totally messed up, all right? But the spiritual gifts that are there are there to be given unto others, to be shared, to edify the body of Christ. The sign gifts such as healing, um, speaking in uh, other tongues, languages, those are past, okay? Those are past. You look up tongues, and this will be in the description box. <coughs> okay? You look, uh, you look at tongues. Every time tongues is mentioned in Scripture, like uh, in the New Testament, there's always Jews present. Okay? Always Jews present. All right? The sign gifts were there for the Jews. Okay? But now let's go to James chapter 5. Here's another popular place for them to go. James 5, verses 13 on to verse 20. Excuse me. Now, like I said, I am definitely not 100% yet. <laughs> Beg your pardon for blowing my nose while I'm making this. But um, verses 13 on to verse 20. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and he shall, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now, it says save the sick. It doesn't say heal. In the uh, NIV, in the New Living Translation, I believe also in the American Standard, um, it, uh, in the NIV and the uh, NLT, it says it will heal. It doesn't say saved in the NIV or the NLT. It says, and it will heal the sick. Mm. And the New American Standard, I believe, says something like, will make better or something. But it, it tiptoes around healing instead of save. So you get a Bible that says heal there. Hmm. And the prayer of faith, you, you got to have faith in order to be healed. I've heard people say that, you know, when it came to Paul's thorn in the flesh, that he didn't have enough faith to be healed. I've actually heard charismatics say that, that Paul didn't have enough faith to be healed. Really, the greatest of the church of God didn't have the faith to be healed? You're crazy. But yeah, you can do your uh, check this out on your own. Now, I, I looked this up too before doing this video uh, about James 5.15. Not every Bible says to heal, okay? But see, what that does is that creates confusion. Which one is it, right? Think about that. You got some Bibles that say heal. You got some Bibles that say save. And an atheist comes around saying, well, which one is it? Because heal and save, you can be saved and not be healed. You can be healed and not be saved. Yes, the one can encompass the other, absolutely. But they are two totally different things. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. 
The effectual fervor and prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Got to have enough faith. And, and, and like the sleazy believists, and like the um, uh, name it and claim it guys, their faith is in their faith. See, the object of our faith is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. But you, like with some of these Pentecostal guys, the name it and claim it guys, the object of their faith is their faith. It's like their faith is this magical hocus pocus thing that can do all kinds of wondrous things, okay? Same with the sleazy believest. Their faith, the object of their faith, is their faith. That's the object of their faith. Okay? <clears throat> and they get and they and that's derived from uh, the Christian science thing, Mary Baker Eddy, okay, Metaphys metaphysical mind science, believe it and achieve it, okay? But yeah, that it's nonsense. The object of their faith is their faith. Where saints, the object of our faith, is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. And the thing, too, you got to remember about the book of James is that the book of James is written specifically for who? James 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad in England, greeting. Hmm. Like the book of Hebrews, the book of James are specifically written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's not by grace through faith, dear friend. It's faith and works. These are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. It's faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. Not by grace through faith. Okay? Again, another blunder of not rightly dividing the word of truth. So, I, I, that's going to be it for this video. Like I said, I, uh, I'm struggling pretty, pretty decently to, uh, to do this at the moment. Hopefully by Wednesday this will be totally gone. Like I said, I think, uh, I think what I've encountered is not natural because of the immediate progression. There was no middle ground. What happens when you're getting sick? It's like, huh, I feel like I feel like I could get sick, but I don't want it, of course, right? And um, there's usually that progression. You can feel it coming on. With this, it happened, boom, just like that. And I was down. I was down, man. Um, and, and like I said, I, uh, I traced my steps. You need to know this. I traced my steps quite extensively. I, I don't know where, why, how this could have happened. If it were, if it were food poisoning, 
<laughs> Dude. <laughs> beg your pardon. The system has been thoroughly flushed. <laughs> like my brother said, it's like, you know, why don't you just drink enough water and uh, get it all out of you? Well, I've been doing that. And um, food poisoning doesn't linger that long, especially when you are actively um, flushing the system. So... Anyway, that's going to be it for this little video. I know it's not much. Uh, please forgive me. Um, I'm not. I'm not doing well. <laughs> so, um, thank you. Thank you for your prayers. Um, we love you, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.